Okay, so there is one other thing that we do need to do um, after you have cut the aluminum triangles and then also those bars. You want to make sure you transfer your points. So we've got the one point in the middle or nearly the middle and then we've got the three outside points on the triangle and what I will do is I'll just get a spring-loaded punch here. If you don't have a spring-loaded one just use a nail or something to punch it and I am going to go on each hole Okay, so that's the most important part. So that's why your layout and transferring of all that needs to be very accurate. And then now we're going to drill a hole through. Now for the center hole, I use quarter 20 bolts. So I'm going to go slightly larger than quarter inch drill bit. So use whatever you have. You could probably go up to a 5 16 drill bit and still be safe. But you want that to be able to float on the nut that's going to be underneath it. So you want it slightly larger than a quarter inch. So I'm going to drill the center hole right now. So there we have it. Now I'm going to take this drill bit out. And I'm going to use a smaller drill bit for the outside holes. I typically use an, uh, I believe it's a 6 30 seconds acorn nut as my point that the mirror is going to ultimately rest on. So I will grab the proper drill bit for that. Okay, and now we'll make the other three holes. Now, pop this guy off. Boy, that two-sided tape can be a bear. But that's good. Whenever we're doing pattern cutting, we want it to be on there snug. Okay, so we get this tape off. And there's our holes. So we'll do this to all six of those triangles and then I'll transfer the uh, holes to the bars. One thing I'll put out on the point out on the bar, here's an example that I've already cut out. So the center hole on the bar is going to be a 3 8 bolt that goes through there. So I am going to use a 3 8 bit or slightly larger than a 3 8 bit so like a just under a half inch just slightly larger than a 3 8 inch bit um, for the middle hole and then for the two outside holes that's the same as our center hole on the triangle so that's where the bolts gonna go through there so we want to use that same slightly larger than a quarter inch bolt on those outside holes and that's going to pretty much do our triangles and our support bars and then we're going to cut out the frame for the rest of the mirror cell. So sand this down really good, break your sharp edges, make it look as nice as you'd like and then uh, we're ready for the frame. Okay at this point we have made or machined both our triangles and our support bars. So we have six triangles and three support bars which is going to make 18 points. So I'm going to go back to plop and if we go up here, you know, we've ran our, our numbers. That's how we were able to get the dimensions for the triangles. I'm going to hit graphic plots. And I'll go down here to cell parts or part dimensions again. And this comes up. Now, if you look closely here, we have radius of center of gravity. So that's the radius of center of gravity of the middle point of our support bars for the triangles. So that's going to be the middle point of the support bar. And then we have the end points, which is where the triangle fastens to. So our radius of center of gravity is important because that's how we're going to determine where the three collimation holes are going to be on the telescope. So on the mirror self frame, 
we're going to have three holes in there, three knobs that we're going to use to collimate or adjust the position of the mirror, and 4.438 inches is the radius at which they will be positioned. So you'll see here, I just write that down on a piece of paper, radius of center of gravity, 4.438 inches. Now the other number that's important to note, now we'll close out of this, if we go to, we'll close out of this also, and we will click edit as text, which is what I have done here. Now if we look closely at that, it gives us the relative support radii. So if you'll look right there where my cursor is, relative support radii is 0.3877 and 0.7940. So those are the two circles, as it were, or the support radii, where the triangle points, each triangle has three points, six triangles for 18 points, um, that's the radii of the points themselves. So I'll write those down, and I'm going to convert that into inches. So if we do 0.387 times 8 inches for the radius of a 16-inch mirror, the support radii is 3.01 inches, and then our second support radii is 6.352 inches. Now, those numbers are important because I'm going to make a single ring that holds those triangles close enough together that they can still float, but that they're going to be precise enough in positioning that they're touching the back of the mirror where they need to be touching the back of the mirror. If we don't do that, what's the point of making a precise, nice mirror cell and looking at plop and seeing the numbers that it gives us? You know, what we're trying to do is support the mirror in such a way that we add as little deformation to the mirror as possible. And so as long as we get extremely close to these numbers, and by extremely close, I mean within a hundredth of an inch of the uh, support radii, we're going to be in great shape. So I've got the triangles made, got the crossbars made. Now we need to go out and make the frame itself. The frame is going to consist of two side pieces and three crossbars of aluminum. So we'll go out there and get machining that okay. right now. So we're back in the shop and we are going to complete making our mirror cell. Now one of the first things I like to do is I like to make a template of sorts that will show where my support radii and the radius of curvature points are for the mirror cell. So what I do is I take that piece of paper that I wrote down the information, and the first thing I want to focus on is the radius of center of gravity. Not the radius of curvature, I'm sorry. The radius of the center of gravity of our bars. So we want to find out where those holes are going to go, where we need to transfer those. So what I'm going to do, that number is 4.438 inches. That's the radius. So I will use a pretty high-end rule on this. I've got an engineering tape that goes to the hundredths. Um, it's also metric on the other side, but I can go to a hundredth of an inch, which is, that's going to be plenty, plenty good enough. So I'm going to measure to 4.438 with my compass. Make sure your pencil is very, very sharp. Don't want to make mistakes here. So I will put it approximately in the middle. Put a good divot in it. And now slowly Okay, so that's 4.438. So we might write that down. I'll do that here in a second. And now the other two numbers are my support radii. And that's where the circles, the imaginary circle on one, and then the actual ring that's going to hold the triangles are going to be positioned. So one of them is 3.01 inches, and then the outer ring is 6.352 inches. So I want to do the same thing there. So I'm going to do 3.01. 
use that same divot that we made. Okay, and then the last is 6.352. We'll do the same thing there. Okay, so we've just made a giant bullseye. So now what we want to do, use a larger straight edge, put a line right through the middle. Just be sure to intersect your divot point. I like to actually put my pencil head in that divot point and push the rule up to it. So we'll make a straight line. And now we're going to take a protractor. I'm just going to use a cheap little plastic one here. And we're going to get our angles. So we want three points for our radius of curvature because we have three central holes, in other words, three collimation bolts on our balance, our little balance boards here. So 360 degrees, a circle divided by three is 120. So we want to mark 120 degrees. 120. Hundred and twenty degrees three times, obviously. And you see, I'm taking a little longer on this. This is pretty important to be extremely accurate. So we want to be very, very accurate here. Okay. And now this second circle on the bullseye is where those three points are. That's my four point four three eight inches or the radius of center of gravity of these balance bars. So I want to extend that line from the center all the way through at least that second line. So we will just mark that one, two, and three. So I've got one, two, three. So there you can see that. All right, now what I will do is I will take my center punch. We've got a center punch. This is spring-loaded, and it puts a nice little divot. And I want to punch those three marks. Okay. So for right now, those are the only three I'm going to care about. What I'll do is my outer circle, I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw and just cut this out um, right to that outer line. Um, I'll cut just proud of it and then I'll go back over to the uh, table sander and I'll sand right to that line. This part isn't extremely, extremely important, but this is going to give me a very precise template for the outer imaginary ring that those points are going to touch the back of the mirror. So after I have my complete mirror cell, I can put this down and verify that those points are in the correct place. Um, and then this second ring is, of course, the most important one for the time being because this is how we're going to make our frame. This is how we know where to put the uh, holes on our frame whenever we make it. So I'm going to take this over to the drill press after I cut the circle out or maybe even before. That's not extremely important. And I'm going to take like a 332nd or slightly larger drill bit and drill a hole all the way through on those three points. Now this way, whenever I get my frame set up and centered, I can actually just take my template and set it down on there, and I can use the same center punch. The hole I'm gonna drill is just large enough for this to fit through, so I know that I'm centered and squared whenever I do it, and I'll put those punches on the aluminum, and that's how I'll know where my holes are going to be. There's many other ways to do this. You don't have to follow this procedure that I use, but I've done it several different ways, and this, for me, is the most precise, um, unless we send the materials out to be laser cut, which we, frankly, do quite a bit. So I'm gonna do it this way because we're just doing the how-to series here, and this is something that anybody can do in a small shop. So that's next up. So the next video I'll film is actually gonna be the cutting of the aluminum for the frame itself the mirror cell frame itself.